Hello everyone, good evening, good afternoon. This is Joanna here, founder of Wounds the Scars and creator of the online course, Parenting After Trauma and the Journey from Broken. I help you to heal from the effects of childhood trauma. I hope you can hear me. <clears throat> I'm not using I'm not using my headset, I'm using a mic because sometimes when I use the headset, there's a little bit of a background noise that I don't like. So today we kick off the 12 days challenge. I'll be here live every day for 12 days, uh, answering questions, just pouring into you and helping you to, as we close out 2018, to start, sorry, 2017, I don't wanna rush it then. So to, hello, Irene. As we close out 2017 and start 2018, so do me a favor and please share this broadcast, share this live so that other people can receive value as well. So today we start a 12 days challenge and today I'm talking about managing triggers and what kind of triggers are those? Sometimes when we hear triggers, we automatically assume that it's people who have experienced, um, who are in addictions and those are the ones, only ones who have triggers to manage. But those of us who have experienced trauma, especially childhood trauma, we have triggers to manage as well. It's called a state of arousal. That's the technical term for it that we would use in, in therapy. Um, so today I want to talk I want to talk about that a little bit. Won't keep you long, but that's how I'm planning to kick off the 12 days challenge today. Yay. So please invite people who you know who will the benefit of part of my life. Not yet yet. So we're talking about managing, managing triggers. And um, I want to start by saying that the memory of trauma contains our experiences. When we remember the event that occurs, it can just color the day, it changes everything. So what do we do when we remember? And that's what I mean by triggers. When, when the memory comes, that's the state of arousal, that's a trigger, that's a trigger point. So how do we manage those times? So, but I, I need to kind of explain first, what is trauma? I know I've done it here many times, but I feel the need to do it every time because I always get people say to me, as I've said many times, Joanna, I wasn't sexually abused, therefore I have not experienced trauma. And so trauma is not only childhood sexual abuse, it's parental separation or divorce, it's witnessing domestic violence in the home. It's still sometimes, even those threatening words that you hear when you were growing up, if um, you hear, I'm going to kill you or, you know, things like that. And as a child, when you, if you hear that at three and four, you don't know, children don't know how to reason from cause to effect, research says, until they're about 12. That's just one. So there's no way you're going to know how to reason out and realize that those are just empty words, that they don't mean anything. So if a as a child you hear those words and you hold on to them, then that can be a traumatic experience, especially if it wasn't one time. And sometimes it only needs to be that one time that you hear it and it can have an effect. So it's neglect and abandonment. Let me put my notes up here. It's neglect and abandonment. It's um, when if you were in a family that you were exposed to domestic violence, it can be traumatic for a child being exposed to domestic abuse as much as it is for the person who witnessed the abuse so or, or experienced the abuse. So you might be here and you're parenting a child who have been traumatized. You're parenting a child who have experienced abuse and they have their own trauma to work through. Um, so that's what I wanted to talk about today. So just to kind of clarify what is trauma. And you know, it is said that developmental trauma is where trauma meets attachment. So say you, in your state of development, say between zero to seven, and your trauma happened at that stage, and you didn't connect to your primary caregivers, then that's also trauma, that's developmental trauma. And trauma and attachment is another subject altogether, another area that I deal with in my courses. Um, but I just wanted to mention that right now for, for those of us who are here and as you watch the re replay. So it's just so crucially important that we help people get back to wholeness. 
And is it going to happen in 12 days? No, it's not going to happen in 12 days in 10 minute videos, but it can be a start or a part of your journey of healing. So I'm hoping to give you as much um, value as possible so that it can help you on your journey to healing. So how do we manage triggers? Just wanna go back to that. How do we manage triggers? And how do I know when I'm being triggered? How do I know when I'm in a state of arousal? And when I find out, what do I do? So, so those are the two questions I wanna look at. How do I know? So our body protects us from the reality of danger. Whether that reality is real or perceived, the body protects us. So remember I talked about developmental trauma and I talked about um, those crucial years between zero to seven. So when whatever it is happening those, those years, our brain stores that information and our response to it. And so though we grow up, though we become 14, 15, 30, and 25, those responses are, are stored. And so our trigger points would be when something happens that reminds us or in any way resemble anything that happens in our childhood, then the body reacts immediately and give you that same response, like say um, the fight or flight or freeze response immediately um, occurs. So the body protects us from the reality of danger. So say you grew up in a home where there was lots of shouting, where there was domestic abuse witness, where sometimes you were verbally and physically abused as well. And somebody talks to you in an angry tone at work and immediately your body responds that a state of arousal for you. And you go into your defensive stance of becoming angry or um, withdrawing or or um, being very upset or whatever you do to defend and protect yourself in that place, that would be your trigger point. So your trigger point would be, how do I manage anger? How do I deal with when somebody this demonstrates anger to me, when somebody's angry at me? What is the thing that I do to manage that state so that I don't fall apart, so that I know that I'm in my flight, flight or freeze response, so that I know that I use anger as a defensive shield. How do I do that? What do I manage? What do I, um, how do I manage that state of arousal? So one thing to do is to identify that that's happening because you will react in the same way every time. So that's a clue in itself. You'll be able to identify patterns of behavior because you will react to the same, the same trigger in the same way, mostly you will react to the same trigger. So you can identify patterns. When you've identified it, you might say, so what do I do now after I've identified that that's my pattern of relating? That's how I react to, to anger. Somebody shouts, I freeze, I start to cry. Or somebody shouts, I panic and I leave the situation. So my relationships don't last because I avoid conflict. I become people pleasing, I'm codependent and I find myself in toxic, unhealthy relationships because I don't know how to deal with anger. It frightens me. What do I do? So I identify the pattern, as I said, if you can't see the pattern and one way to, to identify it and to deal with managing arousal states is silence. Silence is beautiful. And if you're somebody on the go, you're type A, you're always doing, always have the music on or the television on, or there's always noise or always on Facebook or something, this might be difficult for you to do, but I can't overstate the importance of silence, of just being still, of sitting, listening, noticing, and making note of what you hear and feel, because it's in that that you'll get the, the key to act with. So silence helped to calm, it helps to soothe, it helps to, you know, just help things regulate again. So you may be at work and you're not able to sit in silence. You can take time out, go to the restroom. Um, I was working with someone sharing the fact that, you know, as a child, you might not have been able to leave the situation when the person was angry. But one thing you can do to begin to do is to remind yourself, hey, Wendy, that you're an adult now and that you have the choice and the power to walk away, to leave that situation, to take a few minutes, go in the restroom, go to find a place on your own, to deep breathe, 
and to give yourself that time to to be silent and to be still so that this that, that the the heightened state of arousal can can be minimized and can you can relax a little bit which will give you some capacity to to think logically and to be able to decide on your next steps so that's really just a quick tip on what in what to do in the moment now that's when you're at work if you're at home you have more space to walk away to go in a room to close the door to play soothing music and to just sit in silence and allow you know the waves so to speak to calm so your body and your mind can be still and that can be healing just in that stillness it can be healing okay thank you for being here thank you for joining wendy and irene please share this um broadcast with those who you think might benefit from it we're going to be here for 12 days today is only day one so we're here for 12 days every day for 12 days um as we do this 12 days challenge tomorrow we're going to deal with healing from the legacy of trauma legacy of trauma such as anxiety and depression and damaging relationship patterns so we're going to look at those tomorrow and again giving you tips and how to begin to make some really useful healthy changes in your life do take care and i'll see you tomorrow bye